Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we are going to find side lengths of right triangles using the Pythagorean theorem. When we're using the Pythagorean theorem, we're specifically talking about right triangles. And the Pythagorean theorem is a relationship between the lengths of sides within a right triangle. Remember, we've got some special names for some of these sides of our right triangle, uh, specifically the one across from the right angle. We call that the hypotenuse. And the other sides of our right triangle are just called legs. Now I'm going to label these with some letters so that we can talk a little bit more about the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so I labeled the legs A and B, and I labeled the hypotenuse C. The most important part of the Pythagorean theorem is the hypotenuse has to be the C value. So let's write out the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So what that's saying is if we have the length of this a leg and we square it plus the length of this b leg squared, that sum will equal this c value squared. In this example, we're given a right triangle. We have the lengths of the two legs, but we don't know what the length of that hypotenuse is. So we're going to use this Pythagorean theorem to help us out. In this picture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label the sides of our triangle so we know where to plug things in with the Pythagorean theorem. The most important piece is that we label this hypotenuse our C value. The other ones don't matter. We can call either leg A or B. It won't matter as long as we label that hypotenuse as our C value. So this 8, I'm going to call my A value. This 6 will be my B value. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking those values and plugging them into the Pythagorean theorem. So the A value we said was going to be 8. So this is going to be 8 squared plus our B value we said was the 6. So we've got 6 squared equals. Now we don't know what the C value is. We just have this X in there as kind of like a placeholder. So on the right hand side, the C is X and we'll have to square that. Now we're going to start solving this. On the left hand side, there's some simplifying that we can do. We can take 8 squared and get 64. And we can take 6 squared and get 36. Now if we're thinking solving, we're going to want to take the left hand side and combine like terms. So 64 plus 36 is 100. And then if we want to get x all by itself, right now there's that squared power on it. In order to get rid of a squared power, we have to square root both sides. On the right hand side, the square root and the squared are going to cancel each other out because they're inverses of each other. So all we have is x. And on the left hand side, if we take the square root of 100, we get 10. So that missing hypotenuse length from our triangle is 10. In this example, I've changed the picture a little bit. Now we've got legs of 6 and 4 but we're still missing the hypotenuse. So just like we did in the last example, I'm going to label these sides, making sure that I call the hypotenuse C. And then we're going to start plugging information into our Pythagorean theorem again. So on this one, I labeled the 6 as my A value. And I labeled the 4 as my B value. And again, we've got that X as our C value. Now on the left hand side, 6 squared is 36. And 4 squared is 16. If we combine like terms on the left hand side, 36 plus 16 is 52. Now again, we have to get x all by itself. We have to get rid of that squared power, so we're going to square root both sides. On the right hand side, when we square root x squared, again, the squared and the square root cancel each other out, so we've got just plain x. On the left hand side, 52 is not a nice perfect square number. So what we're going to do is we're going to look to break it down if we can. Using multiplication, we could take 4 times 13 to get 52. And if we square root each one of those, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 13 can't be broken down at all, so it just stays as the square root of 13. So that's our missing side length for that hypotenuse, 2 root 13. In this example, we're given another right triangle with a side missing. We're going to use our Pythagorean theorem to help us find the length of that missing side. So I'm going to start labeling my sides. The hypotenuse across from the right angle always has to be our C. The other sides don't matter as much. I'm going to call this one A and I'll call this one B. So if we start plugging things into our Pythagorean theorem, we've got X for our A this time, so it'll say X squared plus 
our b value is 3, so 3 squared equals 5 squared. Now if we start simplifying this down, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, and we don't know what this x squared is, so it's just going to stay as x squared. In order to solve this one, we need to get x all by itself. Right now we've got this plus 9 happening, so we'll have to subtract that over to the other side. So we end up with x squared equals 16. And then our last step is going to be to square root this because we need to get rid of that squared power. Squared power and square root cancel out, so we just get x equals right-hand side. 16 is a nice perfect square. When we square root that, we should just get 4. Our last example is an application problem, so I'm going to draw a picture to represent what's happening. So here we've got a 16-foot ladder leaning up against the side of a house. The base of the ladder is four feet away from the house itself, and what we want to do is we want to figure out how high up is that ladder going to reach on our house. In order to start solving this one, we're going to have to identify some sides. And I see a right angle being created between the house and the ground, so that means this 16 feet length has to be our hypotenuse, our C value. This 4, it doesn't matter if that one's A or B, I'm just going to call it A. And then our missing side inside of the triangle right here, that height that we're trying to find, we'll call that one B. So if we start plugging things into our Pythagorean theorem, we get 4 squared plus B squared equals 16 squared. And we're going to simplify this down. 4 squared is 16. We don't know what that b squared is, so it's just going to stay as b squared. And 16 squared is 256. Now our goal is to solve to get b all by itself. So I'm going to take that 16 and subtract it over to the right-hand side. So we get b squared equals 240. Now we're trying to get b all by itself, so we have to get rid of that squared power. So we'll square root both sides to cancel that squared out. So we get b equals. Now with this one, 240 is not a nice perfect square number, but I'm also not going to simplify down that radical. Because we're dealing with an application problem, we're trying to find an actual real life distance, it would make sense in this one to type this into our calculator. I'm going to round to two decimal places. When we square root 240, we get about 15.49 feet. So that's how high this ladder is going to reach up on our house, about 15 and a half feet. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.